And we're back. We soldered all the switches here. Uh, hopefully we didn't miss any joints, but again, even if you happen to miss a joint and the switch doesn't work, obviously you'll just come back to it and figure it out and just solder that pin back on. Um, optional LEDs. I have an LED here. Again, this is a flangeless 3mm T1 LED. Um, the square pad on a circuit board, let me zoom in a little bit. So you can see that there is a square pad and a round pad. Okay. And the square pad designates the anode of the LED, which is the long pin. Your LED will have a short pin and a long pin. The long pin is supposed to go into the square. So, once you turn it over, again, kind of make sure that you're putting it in the right way. In this case, uh, the square pad is on the left side, so I'll be putting in my LEDs where the long pin from the front is on the right side. So, let me just pick, look, let's switch at random, doesn't really matter which one. Can wiggle it along and just put it in there. Just like that. Zoom. You see it right there. Okay. And then what I like to do. is take the leads and pull them up a little bit and just kind of bend them over just a little bit just like that okay and then you can solder them freely without worrying that the LED will fall out alternatively what you can do is on the side of the switch you can simply tape them over so that again they don't fall out and the leads are straight for me, it doesn't matter wh if the leads are bent or straight. Yeah, it's basically a whatever. Um, once you have your LEDs held, just again, take your soldering iron, clean it off, etc. Come in. Again, these will need slightly less solder than the switch pins because they're much thinner than switch pins. I have a little bit too much there. Yeah, just yep, just like that. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit better. You should be able to see. Hopefully, it's nicely soldered. Um, and then take your cutters. And just carefully trim the LED yep, zoom. And just carefully trim your leads. And that's it. Uh, you want to trim them fairly close to the joint. Um, but when you do trim them, make sure you don't pull on the pin or stress the pin. You just want it to make a nice clean cut very fast. Um, if you stress it too much, what can happen is uh, your solder joint will basically like peel off from the board. You, you don't want that. You definitely don't want that. Um, some soldering guides actually recommend that you kind of cut the leads beforehand uh, and then solder them on. And if you can do that, that's great. Um, you have to cut them obviously to a very specific length. And if you can pre-cut them all to that particular length and secure them from the other side uh, using tape, um, that's great. That's even more recommended because then you don't have to stress the solder joint. Um, but I've used this method 
plenty and, and it's okay you know definitely won't pass any government agencies tests or anything like that for southern standards but for hobbyist use it, it's fine as long as again you don't stress it or pull on it um, and that's pretty much it I'm not gonna solder all the LEDs um, not much point as I already showed you how to solder switches soldering LEDs is pretty much the same um, one thing to note about your solder iron when you're done using it Make sure to clean it off. Demonstrate that again. Make sure to clean it off. Make sure it's nice, bright and shiny. Apply a protective coat of solder. Just kind of flood the tip with solder. Put it back in your holder and turn it off. When you do that, you will preserve the tip. Uh, it won't oxidize when it's in storage. Um, and you'll have a much longer time of your tip. And you'll save money on new tips. Um, and that's pretty much it. So now you have your board. You'll just mount it on the case. 